Hello and welcome to a lecture on Python. Today we will see how do we use for loops in Python for solving problems in summation of series. Now this lecture will be a very interesting one because we will be looking into very interesting series and uh, we will see that how without giving a formal mathematical proof we can prove a lot of results that are just you know proved giving fundamental mathematical arguments here we can prove it using python so let's begin so let's write first solve summation of series of first n numbers so let's solve that now summation of first n numbers n natural numbers so let's go with that so for this what we have to do is write sum of series as a variable and set it equal to zero and then afterwards we have to write so a for loop so for n u m b r number in range we start with zero and we go to thousand so we find the sum of the first thousand numbers so we have to write 1001 because if we start with 0 this will run till 1000 you have to remember here the for loop starts with the first entry that is this is the start entry and stops at this but one short of this okay and of course we increment it by 1 and then afterwards we write sum of series is equal to sum of series plus n u m b r and then enter and then we print the sum of series print And let's run this as we can see that the first of the first sum of the first thousand numbers is five thousand five thousand so uh, let's check whether it is correct so for that what we can do is we can take the first sum of the first three numbers so we start with zero two three and we run this okay so the sum is going to be zero plus one plus two well you have to remember here it will stop at 3 minus 1 that is 2 you have to remember this for for loop okay so that's going to be 0 plus 1 plus 2 and that makes it 3 so the sum of the first thousand numbers so for the first thousand numbers you have to write thousand one and you have to run the program and there we are now let's take the sum of series of series reciprocals okay and equate that to zero now we can copy this for loop paste it here okay and we write here reciprocals and we write here reciprocals too Okay, and we write reciprocals here too. Now this program will give me the sum of all the reciprocals of the first n numbers starting right with zero. Now if we start with zero, you have to remember one thing that 
is 1 divided by 0 is going to be infinity. So we have to start with 1. And here instead of number, we have to write 1 divided by number. Okay. So this is the sum of all the first n reciprocals, right? And let's run it. And as you can see here, we get 9.7876. Now let's increase this and see what is the number we get. Well, 12, let's increase further. Let's each time increase by a factor of 10. As you see, the calculation gets more time consuming. The computer is struggling. Now, as you can see here, the computer is struggling to calculate it. It's 16. So further 10 times. Yes, now the computer is taking time. Now, remember, this would depend, the calculation of this number would depend on your processor. So this is a very good way of checking which compressor, uh, computer processor is fast, whereas which computer processor is slow. Now, we can keep increasing by a factor of 10 and see where exactly it starts taking some time or some lag in doing this calculation. And we see here it is 18.9978. So we stop at this. So this was the sum of the first n reciprocals. Now let's do something very interesting here and let's take sum. Okay. But this time I will take the sum of reciprocals where the series is going as going to be as 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5. So for every even number, even reciprocal, it's going to be a plus sign and for every odd reciprocal it's going to be a minus sign. Now how do we do that? So we write here sum first and we define it as a sum and then we take the for loop as it is. And what we can do here is after we, let's change the name after we have copied here. So this is going to be just sum. And this is also going to be just sum. Okay. And this is also going to be just sum. Okay. There we are. And let's put this in a bracket. So one over number, that is the reciprocal. We put it in a bracket. And to it, we multiply minus one. And this should be minus one. The whole raised to two. So if it is whole raised to number, then what is going to happen? Now, if the number, the first number, if it is one, this is going to be minus one, right? So this is going to be one over one, right? So it's not going to work. So we will have to initialize it as one and we have to start it with two. Now let's see. The first number is going to be 1. The second number now is going to be 2. So it is going to be minus 1 the whole raised to 2, which is going to be 1 and will be 1 upon 2. Then this third number which is going to come over is 3. So minus 1 the whole raised to 3 is going to be minus 1 and it will be 1 over 3. So what do we get? We get a summation of a series where the even reciprocals are going to have a positive number and the odd reciprocals are going to have a negative number, right? And let's see what do we get now after running this program? Well, Taking a lot of time.
So in this case is what you can do is you can stop and you can reduce the number of terms that you're calculating for. So let us take it for the first 100 terms and run this program. And there we are, we have 1.3118. Now let's take it for first 1000 terms. And let's run it. And here we have 1.3073. So, and let's take it for the first 10,000 terms and let us see, does it calculate quickly? Yes, it does calculate. And as we can see here, this is a very important mathematical and interesting number that we get. As we increase the number of terms in this, the value comes to a limit of 1.3. Just watch here. Let's increase by a factor of 10 more. And let's see, as you can see here, it converges to a limit of 1.3068. So this is a very interesting result that we have got. Now, what if the even numbers, even reciprocals were negative and the odd reciprocals were positive? Now, how we can do that? So let's copy this out first and put it in another cell. So for this, what do we have to do? It's fairly simple here. We have to start with one and then for two, it has to be, all you have to do is take number and write it as number plus one. Okay, now when the number two comes here and the number two comes here, this is going to be raised to three. So we will get a minus one here. When the number three comes here, this is going to be three plus one, four. So this is going to be up one minus one, the whole raised to go, four is going to be one. And one by number is going to be three. It's going to be one over three. So now let's run this and see what we get. Let's do it for the first hundred numbers. There we are. And as you can see here, it's 0 0.6881. Now let us increase it by a factor of 10 and let us see. Well, as you can see here, it very quickly converges to 0 0.69. Is this not a very interesting result? Very quickly, it converges to 0 0.6931. So we can really study summation of series using for loops. Mathematically, it's a very powerful tool to study summation of series. Okay. Now, having done this, any other application of this? Let's assume that we have an equation 6 x the whole square minus 24 x plus 24. Let's assume we have this equation, quadratic equation equal to zero. Okay, so let's take this quadratic equation and how do we find the root of this quadratic equation? For this also, if you want, we can use a for loop. Uh, but what is going to happen here is that it's not going to be an easy task. Okay, but let us have a look. So we take this and we take it here and we copy this for loop and we start with zero and we write down the number of iterations that we are going to take and then we write this as x is equal to start the bracket 6 star x so let's take the bracket in x square plus 24 divided by 24 so we rewrite the equation as in such form so this is an successive substitution method of doing it so we keep getting, so we have to start with the x here. So let's start with x is equal to 0 0.01. And then with successive substitution, it should get solved. 
So let's see, does it really get solved? So x and we done this. And as you can see here, we have got the root here 1.9960. That's it. The equation has only a single root and that is 2. But here, this would all depend on what is the initial guess we have taken. Now, remember one thing, if we took the initial guess as 2, 0.1. And let's see if this converges. Well, it doesn't converge. As you can see here, it will not converge. So, using a for loop to get the roots of the equation depends on the choice of the initial values that you take. Otherwise, it's going to be a very difficult affair. So, at the outset itself, I said that, yes, this is going to be a difficult task to solve using a for loop. But then it's just a demonstrative effort here that it's a demonstrative exercise here that how for loop can be used even to find out the roots of linear as well as non-linear equations. Okay, so you have to write it in a uh, form where uh, you can do successive substitutions of a single variable and you can solve it out. So this was all about for loops and hope you have found this lecture very, very interesting because I have taken some few very interesting problems here. And uh, that would that was of uh, arithmetic progression, geometric progression, finding out the roots of for loops. So goodbye, have a great time and keep watching. Next, we will see if statements if statements allow us to break the loops uh, based on certain conditions. And this is also very important in mathematics because once our job is done, we would like to, you know, stop using the loop and start getting ahead with the next lines of code. Okay, friends, goodbye. Have a great day.